In this video, I'm going to show you a series of selection methods and ways to retouch small parts to large parts of images. I'm going to show you how to remove these birds and then how to remove this giant pier. So this is a follow along practice video. I've included the link in the description below for you to download for free the image or images that I'm using. Yes! Okay, first, a selection isolates part of an image so you can work on just that area without affecting the rest of the image. When you make a selection with any of the selection tools, you get an animated border, kind of like marching ants that looks like they're walking around the edge of your selection. The area inside that animated border represents your selection. Now, if you ever want to add to a selection in order to select more, you can either click the add to selection icon, which changes depending on which selection tool you're on. You'll find that always up in the options bar, or you can just press shift and drag. If you want to select less to have less to remove something from your selection, just click the subtract from selection icon in the options bar or press alt or option and drag. Now, after you have a selected portion of the image and you want to make an adjustment, you can do anything to that selection that you want. Apply a filter, you can paint it, you can fill it, you can duplicate it, you can add a layer mask with it, you can add an adjustment layer. Just remember, that when a selection is active, adjustments affect only the selected area of that specific layer. So let's get started. Command zero to fill the screen. Okay, one of the quickest ways to fix this, I believe, is just to go grab the spot healing brush tool right here. If you don't see yours, click and hold and just choose spot healing brush. And this is really great. All you do is just paint over it. Paint over whatever you want to remove and Photoshop will figure it out. So I'm clicking and just painting, same as I did in the painting demo. Generally, you wanna paint a spot bigger than whatever you want removed, but not dramatically bigger, just bigger. And there are like 29 birds here, so you've got to do this 29 times, but this is real time, and I'm done. Now it looks like I have a dust spot here. I'll get rid of that from my sensor, and I'm done. So this is finished. That's how you would remove a few small things. Now what if you wanted to remove, say, this entire pier? Another thing you could do is you could come over to this quick selection tool and just paint over it. But I have to say, this tool works best when it's got color and tone. This particular tool didn't always do great on black and white images. So I'm gonna hit Command or Control D to deselect, which you can find up here under the select menu and deselect. But the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control D, saves you a ton of time. Well, how about uh, the object selection tool? And I'm gonna just draw a box around it and say the object is the pier. It did an okay job, but I actually want that reflection as well. So I hit Command or Control D. I think for this, I would come up to the old school selection tools, the lassos. And I just do the polygonal or the regular. The polygonal lets you click and drag, click, and then I drag, and it won't lock down until I click again. Pull over, click. This works because it's such a rectilinear shape. When you see the marching ants, that means you now have an active selection that's ready to have an effect applied to it. What I would probably do is just right click and choose content aware fill, and it's gonna try and figure it out. Now it's pulling from the green areas. So if you don't want it to pull from the mountains or the sky, unpaint those, right? Remove those from it and it's a live update right over here. So I'll click on the plus icon and I'll paint all this. It's like, yeah, all of that looks good. And look over here. See, it's it's auto updating as we go. And I think that actually looks really good. I'll just click OK, Command D to deselect. It's gone. Like we have removed an entire pier just with those short techniques. So let's try it with this image. Let's use that same technique. Let's try the hand lasso tool, which is kind of a free hand draw, something like this. And you just wanna be a little bit in front of your subject. Doesn't have to be super good. Now notice I got the guy's shirt a little bit right here. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just add to that selection, let go. See how easy that is? Now there's another tool. If you click and hold in the spot retouching area and choose the patch tool. Now this particular image may be a little bit not the right size, but I'll try. I'm gonna click and drag and I'm gonna say, patch it with this area over here, but I don't have enough area to go over to, right? Like it's, it's not gonna work. I don't have enough to pull from. So I command and control Z to undo that. Then maybe let's try edit and fill. Oh wait, look at that. Another place to use content aware fill. But if I didn't choose this and I just chose fill, you can actually drill down in this dialog box and choose content aware. You have a lot of ways to get to the same exact place. Click okay. Didn't do a bad job. There's some blurry edges here. I'm gonna hit command Z to undo that. 
So one of the things I'm concerned about is I'm about to do everything on my background layer, and I typically don't like to do that. So I'm going to command or control D, command or control J to duplicate the layer. And just to save myself some time, remember any of these selection areas will activate the select subject button. Let's see if Photoshop can tell what the subject is. You know, it, it didn't do a bad job. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the polygonal again and click back at the source point. There we go. Now I'm going to right click and choose content aware fill to bring up that quick dialog box because I want to see what it's choosing. And I want to tell it by holding down the alt or option key to, you know, yeah, add this, add this. Maybe I'll toggle on high color adaptation for right in here. Still like it. I'm going to click OK. Command D. Did a decent job in the foreground, right? Command one to zoom in. Like I don't see any problem here, but right around here I start to see my line. And here it looks a little blurry. So here's how you would fix this part. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge this with this by hitting Command or Control E. See how it squished it all together? Then I'm gonna grab the clone stamp tool which is right here. You can also hit S. To make this work, you have to alter option click. You're gonna get a bullseye with your cursor and then you click where you wanna paint from. So I'm gonna paint from this area right here. See how I line that up so you can pull it over? Now I'm painting at 100% and that's a little intense. So I'll command Z it. I'll go down to 60%. I'm talking about the opacity. You can lower or raise it just by dragging over the word or you can just hit the number. I can hit eight for 80%, four for 40%. See how that works. Option key for the bullseye, select there. Make my brush smaller. Maybe that'll help make it not so ridiculous. Gotta be 100% it looks like, but that's too dark. So I'm pulling from too dark of an area. So I hit Command Z a couple of times and start over. Let me start from this area. See, that doesn't look good either. This is sort of the problem with the clone stamp tool. It takes a lot of back and forth. So I just wanna get rid of the blurriness. So now I need to fix this line. I wanna be hard. Now I'll come over here and hit seven for 70%, just to kind of blend this in a little bit. Maybe I'll hit three for 30%, see if I can somehow make these blend together a little better. I'll come from the other side. You see what I mean? This this part's a little difficult, but remember we moved a giant here. But as we keep working it, we're going to get a better and better solution. Now let's see if an adjustment layer will also help camouflage what's going on. So I'm going to go up to the vibrance, which you know how to use now. I'm going to say anything that's muted, please give it more color. I like that. And then I'll pull up the saturation as well, just a touch. Command minus. I've got to say, turn that off and back on. I still see this tiny blurry area. I don't know that other people would, but you can continue to work at it and kind of get it to where you want it so that people don't. I think for a quick fix, this looks really good. So I'd save it out and keep on moving. Yes! In this video, I wanted to show you the pitfalls of the brightness and contrast adjustment and then show you the overwhelming benefits of the levels adjustment layer. So this is a follow along practice video. I've included the link in the description below for you to download for free the image or images that I'm using. Yes! So looking at this image and thinking of your histogram, what's missing? Do we have white tones in this image? Do we have black tones in this image? We don't have the fullest range. If I click on my little histogram icon here to bring it open, if I can click this exclamation point, that just means it updates the histogram. And I definitely have no pure blacks. I'm missing a few of the dark tones. I have no pure whites and I'm missing a few of the highlight tones. But our eye doesn't quite see that. But this is a flat image. It's actually a perfect example of a flat image because typically a flat image is missing both black and white tones. Although it can be called a flat image if it's missing just black or just white. So let's fix this. If I were to add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer to this, go right to my properties panel. It's like, okay, well, I need to make it brighter because I don't have pure white yet. All right. So how do I get the blacks? Maybe if I bring up the contrast, I can get more blacks. Okay. I'm stretched it out. I still don't have pure black. I'm starting to get pure black, but now I've blown out my highlights. So I think, well, maybe I need to bring my highlights down. Okay. That's good. That's getting me more towards pure black, but now I'm losing my pure white. This is kind of the downfall of the brightness and contrast. It's a universal application over all of the tones in your image with the same power. Basically, it's like taking a hammer and the same force you would use to hit a nail is the same force being used to kill a fly. It's overkill in some areas and it's not enough for other areas. So this is where I want to show you another way to adjust the tones in your image. I'm just going to hit delete. And if you're on an adjustment layer, the first delete deletes the layer mask. The second delete deletes the adjustment. Now let's go up to the levels adjustment layer which looks just like this histogram right here. But if you hover over it, it says levels. And I'll go ahead and close this because I don't need that histogram anymore because I get a built-in histogram. And if I can't see everything, just hover in between the properties panel and the layers panel and just drag down a little bit so you can see all the information that you see on the screen now. The easiest way 
to fix an image that's missing blacks and or whites is just to drag the slider that's missing something to the base of the data mountain. This is the data mountain. This is the histogram. This is showing you the tones in your image. So if I just take this black slider and I drag it to the base of the mountain, do you see how that didn't change my highlights at all? It pushed everything to the left of this histogram to pure black and it recentered my midtones equally between the blacks and the whites. So now I'm going to grab the white slider and pull it over. And now I can readjust the midtones to taste while still maintaining my blacks and whites. See how that gives you control over the three big tones in your image, but in an individual way. And watch this. I'm going to click this reset icon. If you hold down your alt or option key while you drag one of them, it's going to show you where the tones first start to show up. Okay, it looks like in the cyan, I'm starting to get pure black. See how far into it I've got to come before I start getting true pure black, which is right there. But I don't like the look of that. So sometimes you got to balance out what is the technically accurate black or the visually balanced black that's the best. So again, normally come come close to the bottom of the mountain and it'll get you there. I'll hold down the alt or option key while I drag the white slider. So this is where I'm starting to get pure white. At that point, I'm blowing out everything, right? So I just need a balance. And you see how it's sort of ends around the base of the mountain. So I'm just going to leave it there. So this is is the advantage of considering to use levels for your adjustments because you get controls over your highlight areas, your shadow areas, and your midtone areas in three separate ways. And this is by far the easiest tool to use that gives you the most control. I hope that helped. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped, and if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> god. Oh my god, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.